Let's take a closer look at this relationship between the standard free energy and the standard self potential or the standard electromotive force for a given electrochemical cell. Now the standard electromotive force of course is a measured when all the species in the cell are in their standard states. And what that means is that if we've got any um, ions in solution, they would be um, at one molar concentration. If we have gases, they would be at one atmosphere pressure and the temperature would be uh, 25 degrees Celsius or <clears throat> excuse me, 298 Kelvin. Now the standard um, Gibbs free energy of course is dependent on reaction coefficients. The amount of material that's reacting um, <clears throat> is reflected in the standard change in Gibbs free energy. Um, this is because you can see the relationship between the uh, standard Gibbs free energy and the cell potential equals n, the number of moles of electrons transferred times Faraday's um, constant. And that amount will vary depending on your um, coefficients used to balance your equation. However, the standard EMF, or the voltage, the standard voltage, is not dependent on coefficients. It is an intensive property of an electrochemical cell which is based on the difference in the energy level between um, electrons in uh, reactants and products. So the EMF of a cell is independent of the size of the cell. To get higher potential than predicted by the equation, you need to construct a battery with a series of cells. And so then your um, potential would be additive over a series of cells. Okay, So in order to increase the work that you can get out of an electrochemical cell or the uh, st change in standard free energy, you um, can change the potential only by adding a series of cells but and you can change the um, charge by increasing the amount of reactants. All right, so um, let's take a look at an example here. Calculate the reaction free energy for this particular cell. It's a NICAD cell or nickel cadmium, and um, this is the redox reaction that's already balanced. You can see the solid cadmium reacts with the nickel hydroxide to give cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide. And so we can um, see that the EMF of the cell when fully charged is 1.25 volts. So that's the standard potential of the cell, which has already been um, determined for us. And the question is, what's the reaction free energy? Now, in order to figure out the reaction free energy, we have to recall the relationship between the standard free energy and the standard cell potential, and that is uh, negative n number of uh, moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times E. Um, so what we have to do is look carefully at this reaction to figure out what N is, the number of moles of electrons that are transferred um, <clears throat> across this electrochemical cell. So we can see that the cadmium is oxidized, and so it's zero uh, state to a plus two state. Um, the nickel here is going from a reduced from a plus three state to a plus two state, and there's two of that occurring. So um, we can see here that two electrons are flowing um, for each mole reaction carried out here. So uh, we can set up this equation. The change in the Gibbs free energy is going to be negative two, negative two moles of electrons times Faraday's um, constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons times the um, standard cell potential here. They told us it's 1.25 volts, and a volt is the same as a joule per coulomb. So the coulombs cancel, the moles of electrons cancel, and we're left with um, the change in the Gibbs free energy here equals negative um, 241 times 10 to the third joules, which is the same as negative 241 kilojoules. So the, the change in the Gibbs free energy is a negative value and it's a large value, which is consistent with the fact that we had a positive cell potential, so this is a spontaneous change.